My name is Daryl Barnes, and this is a review for the heart. It is a specific review for a specific class. I'm glad you're here, nevertheless. My classes, I ask them to highlight material, and your teacher may ask something else, so make sure you do what your teacher requires of you. Where is the heart located in the chest? It is called the mediastinum. When we say that the heart points down and to the left, what is the pointy part called? Apex. It's called the apex. What is the top kind of back portion of the heart called? Base. It is called the base. The two top chambers that pump blood down to the ventricles are called what? Atria. These are called the atria. On the external surface of the heart, there is a sulcus called the interventricular sulcus. It roughly divides the right and the left ventricles. This is the location of an anterior descending artery. A lot of times in those people that have a heart attack, this is the one that gets clogged in those people. About how much percent of your blood is contained in the veins? 70. Roughly 70%. When we talk about the different circuits that are supplied by the heart, remember the pulmonary circuit is supplied out of the right ventricle. So what circuit is supplied out of the left ventricle? It would be the systemic circuit. Okay, gotcha. Where are you going with this? Atrial natriuretic peptide. Does it flush water out of the body or conserve water? What does it do? Conserve, right? That is big aldosterone, by the way. Oh, okay. It is a water flusher outer. It is a diuretic, atrial natriuretic. Natriuresis flushes sodium out of the body and water passively follows behind it. It is a monitor by the heart of the stroke volume and it is a hormone sent down to the kidneys to get rid of water, reducing blood pressure. The outer layer of the heart is called the parietal pericardium. There's an outer fibrous layer and then there's an inner serous layer. What do we call the layer that's directly on the heart itself? The visceral pericardium. It is the visceral pericardium and sometimes it is also called the epicardium. epicardium. Okay, very nice. What is the middle muscular layer of the heart called? Myocardium. Myocardium. And the inner layer of the heart is called what? It is called the endocardium, and remember it is consistent with the endothelial lining of the blood vessels, which is called the tunica what? Do you know that? Intima. Tunica interna, tunica intima. Very good. That's awesome. This is a feature on the back of the heart that pulls used blood from the heart itself and empties it back into the right atrium. What are we talking about? It's a sinus, right? It is called the coronary sinus. Very good. What is the procedure called where a stent is placed in an artery to help make that artery more patent? Angioplasty. It is called coronary angioplasty. That is correct. What are the vessels that bring blood to the right atrium? What are they called? Superior, inferior, vena cava. That is a very good pronunciation. Uh, superior and inferior. I've always said vena cava, but I think it's vena cavi. <laughs> I think that's what it is. If we took a coronal section to the heart, we would see that there's a divider between the ventricles and between the atria. What is the divider between the atria called? Septum. It is called the interatrial septum. Remember that in fetal, fetal time there is a foramen ovale and that allows for movement of blood back and forth. I believe we learned that there's also a ductus arteriosus that bypasses from the pulmonary to the aorta during that time as well. Where does the right ventricle pump blood to? Is it the pulmonary circuit or the systemic circuit? Pulmonary. It is the pulmonary. And what semilunar valve does it push through? Pulmonary the valve. pulmonary semilunar valve. Okay, what semilunar valve does the blood push through from the left ventricle going into the sy systemic circuit? Aortic. It is the aortic semilunar valve. Very good. 
So here's another question while we're at it, and we may pick back up on this a little bit later. It's the closing of which valves that cause the first heart sound? The semilunar, right? The AV valves cause the first heart sound, but now the second heart sound is caused by the closing of the semilunar valves. Okay, very good. What is the irregular tissue on the inside of the heart called? Everybody say trabeculae carne. Trabeculae carne. And what is the type of muscle that holds the chordae tendinae so that these valves don't prolapse backward? Papillary. Papillary, Papillary muscle. muscle. Very good. Okay. The tricuspid valve is on the right. The bicuspid is on the left. What is another word for the bicuspid valve? Mitral. mitral. It's called the mitral valve. Very good. What feature is in the right atrium that helps set the pace of the heart? It is the SA node or the pacemaker. Also remember that when we look at a cardiac action potential, that sodium does come in to depolarize this and potassium attempts to go out to restabilize the membrane potential, but there's an ion, I have a question mark on the board, there's an ion that begins pouring in that keeps the heart from re repolarizing quickly. What is that ion? Everyone said calcium. Calcium. <laughs> calcium is what increases that plateau phase and therefore increases the refractory period of the heart. Do you remember why the refractory period of the heart is important? So it doesn't have a So it cramp. can't get a muscle cramp in it. Right. That's one of those strange things is we go to sleep, everything else in our body kind of seems to rest, but your heart just keeps on going. So it's got to have some strategy for minimizing some of the cray cray. Let's talk about the ECG for, for a moment. I've got the PQRST on the board here. What does the P wave represent? Is uh, atrial depolarization. Atrial right? depolarization. What about QRS? Ventricular depolarization. And then what about the T wave? Ventricular repolarization. Ventricular repolarization. Y'all are doing awesome. Okay. So we, we, we think about the heart sound loved up. S1 and S2 are these sounds. Let's review one more time. What valves close in the first heart sound? AV. The AV valves. What about the second one? Semilunar. Semilunars. Remember that systole is the, the, the higher pressure in the blood pressure. Diastole is the lower pressure. Usually it's considered to be like 120 over 80. Let's say that the heart rate was 70 beats per minute and there were 70 milliliters per beat. What would the cardiac output be 70 times 70? 4,900 4, milliliters per minute. Very good. And if we talked about nerve input to the heart, even though it does have a contractile rhythm, would we sus what would we suspect parasympathetic to do? Would it have a, a, a tendency to slow down or speed up the heart? Slow down? It would tend to slow things down, and sympathetic might increase force of contraction or rate. Heart failure is the inability of the heart to function as a pump. So thank you for coming to this review session. There is a downloadable companion to this review session. Please click below the video and pick that up if you would like to have something in your hand. Remember to subscribe, like, comment, and share. That is what creates a community on YouTube.